Hey friends, welcome to Worship This Memorial Day weekend at Elmhurst CRC. We are online only because of Fifth Sunday Serve, and we recorded the service on Tuesday, May 24, uh, which also happens to be the day of the tragic shooting in Uvalde, Texas, that killed 19 kids and two teachers and wounded and scarred so many others. Um, we didn't know at the time of filming um, what was happening in the rest of our country. And while this weekend, for sure, we want to give thanks for the sacrifices of blood of our veterans that give us our freedom as Americans, we are also for sure mourning uh, the taking of life and the theft of freedom and grieve the loss of potential um, for so many kids. Um, I long for a world where violence is a thing of the past, and quite frankly, that's one of the reasons why we serve on Fifth Sunday, so that we can offer signs of life and hope that is coming soon. I want to take comfort that the Bible ends with this prayer, Come, Lord Jesus. And Jesus responds to that prayer by saying, Yes, I am coming soon. So in faith and confidence that a better kingdom and a better country is coming soon for all of us, let's lift up our hearts and voices and start by singing together. Memorial Day weekend once again. If you're listening to this or watching this, you're probably at your cottage or in some cool place, or maybe you're just at home here in Illinois with all of us. Well, this is fifth Sunday serve weekend also. And so if you're watching this and it's not 10 o'clock Sunday morning, you can still get to church in time to participate in fifth Sunday serve. It's a great chance for us as a church to get out in the community and show people that God loves them. If you want to know what we're doing on this Sunday morning at 10 a.m., 
You can check the website and all the projects are listed there. You can sign yourself there or just show up Sunday morning and we'll get, we'll get you to work. Sound good, Mimi? Sounds great. I'll be there. All right. So this morning I spent some time with Dick Silester. Do you know what that is? Uh, well, I used to teach. He was a math teacher. So I, he just did a lot of numbers. Yeah, he's also cross-country coach extraordinaire, very well loved. He's been a key person in helping us design this course that we're doing on June. What course? It's a 5K, June 4th on the Prairie Path. Starts at nine o'clock for the kids, 9.30 for the adults. He's got the course marked out. He's got all the stations set. We need volunteers, we need walkers, we need runners, please come. Why are we doing this? Uh, there's a big reason, part of Celebrate Ministries. What is it? <laughs> Celebrate Ministries? Well, it's a chance for us to celebrate all the things that God has done this year in our church and to really get all in and excited about what he's going to do in the coming year, right? Yeah. So this is, a, a, this is right in the middle of the week. You get to get out and run with your fellow church members. Yeah, it can't take more than an hour and a half. And as I told you last week. <laughs> an hour and a half? We can <laughs> last last Is this year. a marathon or is this a 5K? <laughs> At any rate, we'd love to have you join us. <laughs> Sign up to either volunteer or participate. It's going to be great fun. And really, we can't do it without everybody participating. Yeah. You can walk. You can run. But the key is you have to win. That's what I'm trying to do. Be there. All right, let's sing again together.
this morning we'll pray words that Jesus once prayed for us. In fact, these are words that Jesus is certainly still praying for us. As you hear these words, imagine Jesus praying them for you, for us as a church, for us as a community, and then maybe specifically for your family members, your friends and neighbors. You might even imagine Jesus praying these words over someone you struggle with. So let's pray together. These words of Jesus is found in John 17, 20 through 26. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for all who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you have loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Indeed, remain in us, Lord Jesus. Amen. It's such a great song in the spirit of slowing down. I invite you to pray along with me the words that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey friends, this is the sixth Sunday after Easter. These are known as the great Sundays in the church here. And at Elmhurst CRC, we've been working through the book of Revelation, which reveals 
a picture of what the final victory of the risen Jesus is going to look like. And today we reach the end of the book of the Re Revelation and the end of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. And the ending is not so much a cliffhanger. It's very clear that Jesus and his grace win in the end, but it is kind of uh, when is this going to happen kind of ending. There is a major promise that is left unfulfilled at the end of the Bible. Um, we're going to read together a few selections from Revelation 22, um, three different sections, verses 12 to 14, verses 16 and 17, and then verses 20 and 21. This is Jesus himself talking, Revelation 22, verse 12. Look, Jesus says, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. These words from Jesus scared me, I admit, quite a bit when I was a kid. Jesus is coming back, that's his promise, and he's coming back soon. But what made me anxious as a kid was I had this thought, would I be ready for this? Uh, and the thought of Jesus rewarding or giving to each person according to what they have done, it doesn't take too long a hard look at somebody's life, my own life, to think like, wow, if Jesus gives me what I deserve and my reward is based on what I've done, uh, this might be a tough go. As I got older, I realized that there's some comfort, much deeper comfort mixed here. Jesus identifies himself as the solid rails of history. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. That's the A and the Z in the Greek language. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. And he says this so that we can recognize that everything and everybody is within his embrace. My own little life is a very tiny blip on that huge expanse between Jesus being the A and the Z of history. And then as I got a little older, I also uh, realized and the truth sank down a little deeper that the gospel isn't about getting what I deserve. It's not about what getting we deserve. That's how life apart from Jesus works. The principle that you reap what you sow. That's the cosmos without grace. But under the grace of Jesus, we share together, not in what we deserve, but in what Jesus deserves. If we are in him, if we have been baptized in his name, covered in his love, if his name is written across our foreheads, if we are wearing the white clothes that were washed in his blood, we will receive what Jesus receives because we are with him in life and in death, eating from the tree of life, entering into his city. And that is the last thing from a terrorizing picture. That is uh, a picture of a place that is good every day. Jesus goes on in Revelation 22 to say this, I, Jesus, have sent my angel or my messenger to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears this say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. My earlier apprehensions have been dwarfed by my desire to have Jesus set everything right to complete the work of healing the world, healing me, healing the church, to usher in the new heavens and the new earth. So I find that I can honestly pray as a middle-aged person these days, come on, Jesus, bring it on, come quickly. And if you can pray this prayer, you are in good company too, because the Bible says that it's the Holy Spirit and the bride, the church itself, that says, quote, come Lord Jesus. And anyone who hears this word, this revelation, says the same thing, quote, Come, Lord Jesus. And when Jesus hears these prayers and the longings of our heart, he says this, Yes, I am coming soon. So the word in all these phrases uh, is kind of from the heart language of John the disciple, the apostle, 
who wrote this. In the Aramaic language, there are these two words, Maranatha, or Maranatha, sometimes we say in English, which is simply translated here as, Come, Lord Jesus. These prayers kind of stack on top of each other and escalate. And at the very end of the Bible, I think God's intention is for us to understand that this is going to happen before we know it. I know it's been 2,000 years since Jesus' life and death and resurrection, but I think it's kind of like a kid in second grade who feels like the academic year is never going to be over. When is it going to be summer vacation? And maybe as an older student or an older parent, you can tell that second grader, like, summer is coming before you know it. And this is God's message to us. This life might seem long, but Jesus is coming back to make everything right before we know it. Here are the final words of the Bible. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. So in the meantime, before this soon and coming day, the last best word for us, for our lives, is this. Grace. The final phrase in the Bible, the final word from God is this, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. In the meantime, until the day when Jesus comes back, that is the word that is meant to characterize our days, our life, the process that we're in. Uh, nearly 500 years ago, the great reformer of the church, Martin Luther, um, purportedly was planting a tree. Uh, and somebody asked him, Martin, if Jesus, if you knew that Jesus was really coming back like tomorrow, what would you be doing instead of planting this tree? And his answer was, I'd keep planting the tree. Like, it's very clear. I think he was saying, I'm supposed to be following Jesus. I'm supposed to be just living my life, doing the next obedient thing. And for today, he was saying, like, I'm supposed to be planting this tree in the garden. And so it is for us, whatever the Lord is asking you to do, whether it's being a second grade kid, whether it's being a parent, whether it's being a sound guy, whether it's being a plumber, um, whatever it is, we are supposed to grow in that grace in the meantime. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. We're going to sing a final song together about exactly that. Um, wherever you are, I invite you to lift up your heart and your voice and share in the song.
Hey friends, may God bless you this Memorial Day in your remembering, and may God bless you this weekend in your serving. Go in peace in Jesus' name.